G'day everyone, my name is Hoy. Let me walk you through the latest generative AI features in Photoshop Beta and it's improved a lot. But first things first, let's make sure that everyone's using Photoshop Beta. Now I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to click on this Creative Cloud icon here. Let's go to Apps and then just scroll across until you see this Beta icon here. And let's search for Photoshop Beta. If you haven't already got it installed, you will find an option here similar to this called Installed. Now I've obviously got it installed, so if I've got the option to open it, which I'm going to do. So let's just double check that we're on Photoshop Beta, which I am here, as well as it's confirming that it's a beta version here. The first feature I want to show you is the generate image feature. Now there are three ways to generate image. The first one is using this icon here. The second one is this option here in the contextual taskbar. If you don't see your contextual taskbar, go up to window and just make sure that contextual taskbar is checked. Now the third way is going to edit and then select generate image. Now the beauty of having this under the edit menu is that you can assign a keyboard shortcut. Since I'm here, I'm just going to click on generate image and on the right hand side, it will give you some prompt inspiration. So this is particularly helpful if you're new to all this generative AI and you're not sure what to type in to get that image. So if I just scroll here, let's just choose this. So we can learn that to generate this prompt here, they've used room with a floor of lavender and they've selected photo. They haven't used reference image, which I'll explain later. And they've used two effects, which are the beautiful effect and the divine effect. But we're not going to use all this. I'm going to clear all this. I'm going to go back and I'm just going to type in my own prompt. So I'm just going to delete all that. Uh, girl jumping in puddle. And the content type uh, is self-explanatory, whether you want it as an art form or a photo. I want it as a photo. And then the effects, I'll click on that. Let's go down to popular. I want it hyper-realistic. And then I'm going to click on themes and then make it cinematic. You can, in your own time, just scroll through all of this to see what you actually want. Once I'm happy with that, let's click on generate. Now, like before, you have three variations. You can see your variation down here. So click on this, click on that. And as well as you can see the variations under your properties panel here, it's exactly the same variation. So no different, just a different way of seeing it. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that the images are more realistic, especially with human faces and fingers, etc. Not to say that it's 100% perfect. So let's just check out what the regular Photoshop would do under exactly the same prompt. So here is the regular Photoshop. So it doesn't have beta here. This doesn't have a generate image option. So what we need to do is select our canvas, which I'm going to do by pressing Command or Control A. That will bring up our generative fill option here. Let's replicate our prompt, girl jumping in puddle. Let's click on generate. Now you can immediately see that this is a little bit spooky. So I'm just going to click off this and you can see that, you know, the generation has a lot to be desired. This is the regular Photoshop. So this is the beta Photoshop, which is a lot more realistic. And the other difference that I notice is the speed at which the regular Photoshop generates the images compared to the beta. In my testing of this, I found the beta version a little bit quicker. Okay, so I did say that I'll come back to what a reference image is. So there are two ways to access reference image. One is via the contextual taskbar here, and the other one is here. So I'm just going to use this here. There are yet two ways to use reference images. One is to choose your own, and one is to use a palette from Adobe. So. I'm just going to go through here and maybe just click on this random one here and then click on generate and let's see what it does. What reference image does is it tries to use the reference image into the images here. So it splashed out some of the colors on her shirt here. And if we scroll through the options here, 
it does make it a little bit more colorful, right? Now the downside to this is that it's replaced my whole image. So I'm just going to go back to my one of my original ones, which is I think this one. So I can use my own image to influence this preferred image here. So the image that I want to use is to use this image, which I downloaded from Unsplash. So let's see what that does. So let's click on this. And by that, I meant this one here. Uh, and this time, let's choose our own image. And let's select this one and generate this again. So what you'll notice here is that it's got the color from my reference image, which is an earthy green, a contrasty image here, and then put it on the generative or the new image that it generated. So you can see that there's a lot more earthy dark tones here compared to uh, this one, which used this image here as a reference, and then this is without the reference. Now, as I mentioned, the downside is that it's completely changed the image that I liked before. And that's probably because it doesn't have the same sort of settings or options that the Firefly website has. So if I go to the Firefly website, so here I've used the same prompt here and then used the same structural uh, reference here. But you'll notice the difference here that here in the structural reference, I can choose a strength here. So no strength as in not using any of the structural image here or the reference image, I should say, medium strength and uh, full strength. Also, it has the same sort of sliders for the styles as well as more options for the color and tone I can select. Uh, the golden cool tones etc the lighting and the camera angles so it hasn't imported or hasn't made available all the options in firefly yet now all the generative fill options are still available so if i want to expand this i can so if i grab my crop tool c on the keyboard i'm just going to zoom out to make a little bit more space for me and then i'm just going to increase that and then increase that holding option or alt to resize it equal on both sides at the same time before i click on this check mark here let's make sure that i've got generative expand selected and then press this check mark here what I want to show you here is that if I hover over my variations, I will get another icon here. And this is the upscale option here. And upscale is that it will enhance the detail. Now I'm just going to zoom in. So let's just see where the original image uh, ended. Something here and I'll just turn it back on. I'm going to enhance the detail and you'll see that it's enhanced it a tiny bit. So it's very subtle. It doesn't increase the resolution. It just enhances some of the details, upscaling it. So this is before and then this is after. So it's very subtle. Now the other option is that if I go back to my option here, I can click on these three dots. And if I like what's generated, but I'm not 100% happy with it, I can select this generate similar and then it will have another go. So there's not much difference, uh, if I'm honest. OK, so let's get on to another picture. Here I've got a woman sitting on a chair, and I want to show you two things. The first thing I want to show you is this remove background. Now, we can always remove background in the regular Photoshop, so it's not something new. But after I do that, I have these two options here, so I can import another background or generate another background. So it just makes my workflow a little bit quicker. So let's just generate another background. So let's click on that and say office setting with view to beach. Let's see whether it understands that. Click on generate. And there you have it. So again, I can cycle through my options here. So it's not like we couldn't do this previously. It's just making it a little bit easier and quicker for us to do. Now, I'm just going to go back to my original image so I can revert it back by pressing F12. The next thing I want to show you is that I want to change her dress. I want to change it to something like this. I've masked this out, not that it probably matters because it was already on a white background, but I want to help the generative AI as much as I can and not confuse it. So I masked it out here. 
let's go back to here. I'm going to select her blue dress very quickly. So if you're doing this uh, quote unquote for real in your job, make sure that you spend the time to uh, just mask it out perfectly. Let's click on generative fill. Now let's click on this reference image icon here. I'm going to choose my own image and I'm going to select this dress here and I'm not going to type in anything here. So it's going to use 100% of this reference image here. Let's click on generate. Now, as you can see, it doesn't replicate the dress 100%. So this is the pattern on the first variation. If I just go back to this reference image here, but it does get you maybe, what do you say, 60, 70% there. So let me know what you think about these new generative fill using Firefly Image Model 3. Are you going to use it? Do you like it? What are you going to use it on? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video or you learn anything new, please let me know about it in the comments section. Like, subscribe or hit the bell icon so you can get notified for when my next video is out.